Hey everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today we're going to be discussing a medication known as fluconazole. Its brand name is Diflucan. And before I talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. And quickly, if at any time during this video you find this information to be valuable, please consider leaving a like on the video as it would really help me with the YouTube algorithm. So first, what will we cover in this presentation? We'll start by talking about how fluconazole works. We'll then discuss indications or reasons we would prescribe this medication to a patient, followed by contraindications or reasons we would not be able to prescribe fluconazole. We'll then discuss examples of dosing, and then stick around to the end where we'll talk about side effects with percentages. So how does fluconazole work? Well, fluconazole interferes with fungal cytochrome P450 activity. It decreases ergosterol synthesis and inhibits cell membrane formation. In terms of indications or reasons we would prescribe this medication to a patient, we often see it used in the treatment of different forms of candidiasis, which is a type of yeast. It can also be used for systemic candida infections. With respect to contraindications or reasons we would not be able to prescribe fluconazole, we simply wouldn't give this medication to a patient who had a hypersensitivity to fluconazole or any other component of the formulation. Note about dosing with fluconazole. So in the treatment of vaginal candidiasis or a yeast infection, and it's uncomplicated, we would typically give 150 milligrams orally as a single dose. If it was complicated, however, a patient may receive 150 milligrams orally every 72 hours for two or three doses. If it was recurrent, a patient may receive 150 milligrams orally every 72 hours for 10 to 14 days, followed by 150 milligrams once weekly for six months. Now, as with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using fluconazole, so I'll go over some of those here now. 2 to 13% may experience a headache, while 1% may experience dizziness. A rash may occur 2% of the time, and 4 to 7% of patients may experience nausea. 2 to 6% may experience abdominal pain, and vomiting may occur 2 to 5% of the time. 2 to 3% of patients may experience diarrhea, and dyspepsia may happen 1% of the time. Now, some more rare but serious side effects would be DRESS, or a drug reaction with the eosinophilia and systemic symptoms, or a tremor. So, all we're going to talk about today was fluconazole, or diflucan. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to go by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, or most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. Different today. Take care.